Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation for real numbers. Even though it wasn't mentioned, I hope you understood to be solving for real numbers, not just for integers. Now, what would happen if you were solving for integers? That's another story, but we're going to solve for real numbers. We have an equation with two unknowns, so there seems to be infinitely many solutions. But that's not the case. Let's find out. So first of all, when you look at an expression like this, I have the sum of three squares being equal to one third. What does this look like? This is kind of messy. If the all of this, the sum was equal to zero, then it will be more meaningful, but being equal to one third, and we're not looking for integer solutions, and obviously x, y cannot be integers. So it's uh, kind of messy. Let's go ahead and uh, expand everything. We're gonna get x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus 1, and then x squared minus 2xy plus y squared equals 1 third, and then let's go ahead and subtract it from both sides so we can get a 0. Getting a 0 on the right hand side is a good thing, but let's go ahead and combine like terms. I do see these two are like terms, 2x squared, these two are like terms, 2y squared, and then I have the uh, negative 2xy, and then I have the negative 2y. And then finally, 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. Now, we said that the original expression after expanding or before was messy. Do you think this is nicer? Well, not really. This is still messy. We kind of have to fix it. So we need to clean it up. And the idea is, for these kinds of expressions, if you're solving for real solutions, then we do need a sum of squares. Make sense? Okay, so what happens to complex solutions? That's another story. Could we solve this problem using a second method? I'll briefly, I'll try to briefly mention that after I'm done with the first method. I'm not gonna complete it. That's probably gonna take a while, but at least uh, you'll get the idea, okay? So now we have this expression and I said, I wanna write it as a sum of squares. How do you do that? Look at, look at the terms. You have something like x, y, and you have y but you don't have x. So think about it. I could probably write it as something x plus minus something y squared, and then something y plus minus something squared. By the, by the something, I mean constants. So let me go ahead and write it clearly, more clearly. So this is what I mean. We could write this as ax minus by, and I wanna use a minus sign here because of the minus sign here, that kind of makes sense. Uh, by the way, the, the presence of negative 2xy doesn't mean that it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be that term in the middle because of these constants, we can always take it out. Anyways, you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't wanna confuse you anymore. The second piece, since there's no x and there's only y, we wanna write it as cy minus d squared. And I, I'm hoping that this can be set equal to zero. Of course, we're going to expand what's on the left-hand side and then set it equal to this and then find A, B, C, D. There are four unknowns, but trust me, we can find all of them. Okay, great. Ready, set, go. So we're going to expand this and after expanding and simplifying, to keep a long story short, you're going to get something like this. So the terms, the coefficients of, uh, coefficient of y squared is going to be that and then you're gonna get minus two c d y plus d squared equals zero. Now, if you compare these two expressions, you're gonna get a system of equations. Four variables, and we should have at least four equations, right? The, and they are supposed to be independent. Let's see. First of all, from here we get a squared equals two, two a b equals two, and then b squared plus c squared equals two, a lot of twos, by the way, two c d equals two, and d squared equals two thirds. Wow, we were looking for four solutions and we got five. Okay, great. So what do we do with that? Well, we can get two solutions from here. A is equal to root two or negative root two. I'd like to go with the positive and I believe both of them uh, are gonna work because it'll be squared and you can always take out a negative one squared, which is one. So I'd like to go with the positive A. I don't think that's gonna cause any issues. So if a is root two, then a, b is one, so b is gonna be the reciprocal, which is root two over two. So that's gonna be my b value. You see, the system is fairly easy to solve, 
it just collapses. And then if you replace b with root 2 over 2, its square is going to be 1 half. c squared is going to be 3 halves. So c is going to be the root 3 over root 2, which can be written as, after multiplying by the conjugate, root 6 over 2. Okay? So that's going to be my c value. Great. Let's go ahead and look at the d value. c d is 1, so c and d are reciprocals. Therefore, d can be written as root 2 over root 3. But then if you go ahead and multiply by the conjugates, this time it's a different one, you're going to get root 6 over 3. It's kind of hard to believe, but these are conjugates, right? I mean, not conjugates, sorry, reciprocals. Okay, and then finally, d squared is 2 thirds, which implies d is either root 2 over root 3 or negative root 2 over root 3. But we already got the value, so we don't need this. But it just confirms what we found. Of course, they have to agree. Make sense? Cool, cool. Now, we got the values of A, B, C, D, so we can write our expression in this form, and yay, happy ending. Let's see what happens. So from here, we get AX minus BY squared plus CY minus D squared. I hope uh, this made sense why we have it in this form. There is no X term uh, as a linear. That's why. And since A is equal to root 2, so this is going to equal to the following root 2x minus root 2 over 2y squared, which is kind of like a really weird expression, isn't it? And then for y coefficient of y, we get root 6 over 2y, and then the constant d is going to be root 6 over 3. It'll be squared, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Awesome. Okay, great. We can simplify this a little bit by factoring out some terms. And it would make sense if you factor out the coefficient of x here and the coefficient of y here. Why? Because that way you'll have um, monic linear expressions that are being squared. I don't know, it makes sense, but anyways, it just looks better. And finding the x will be, and finding the x and y will be a lot easier that way. Anyway, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll take out a square root of 2 here. That's going to give me x minus 1 half of y. And then, of course, the whole thing is squared. And then plus, and I could probably move this thing. I don't know why I wrote it there. So let's put it here. And then I can just go ahead and factor out a root 6 over 2 inside. you got to be very careful. What do you need to multiply this by to get root 6 over 3? That's a good question, right? It's going to be 2 thirds. And you can easily calculate that. Not too hard. And then so that's what I'm going to get from here. And the whole thing is equal to 0, of course. Now let's go ahead and square the coefficients, the constants that are outside the parentheses, not the brackets. Square root of 2 squared is going to be 2, so this is going to give me 2 times x minus y over 2 squared, and this is going to give me 6 over 4, which is 3 halves, times y minus 2 thirds squared, and then uh, there shouldn't be a square here. I, I think I messed up on that one. I put the square sign twice. Okay, here we go. And then this is equal to 0. Notice that uh, if the sum of two squares is equal to 0, like when you have something like a squared plus b squared is 0, then if a and b are real numbers, this implies a equals 0 and b equals 0. So from here, we can say that, hey, this is equal to 0, so x is equal to half of y. From here, we can safely say that y is equal to 2 thirds. Since x is half of it, x must be 1 third and... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.